Hello dear students, welcome to the session. In this video, I will be explaining about chargeability of income under section 28. Uh, already in the previous videos, I have explained about section 28 that is income from business and profession or profits or gains from business and profession, some basic concepts. Uh, going forward, today we will learn about the chargeability of income. This means uh, there are different categories of incomes which are uh, which will be earned uh, during the course of doing business or profession. But all such incomes are not part of section 28. That means some of the incomes cannot be charged under section 28 because they will have the nature of other heads also. Uh, means they are preferable uh, to be recorded under other heads uh, uh, also. So, in this regard, we will be learning this uh, topic to know the incomes which are specifically eligible to be recorded under section 28. Okay? Uh, there are two things to discuss in this video. Number one is introduction. Uh, as I said, uh, the incomes or type of incomes uh, among the different categories of incomes which a business uh, earns in a previous year all such incomes are not part of tax. Uh, some of the incomes uh, will be recorded or can be recorded or shown under various other sections, maybe under income from house property or income from other sources. Okay? So, exact incomes which are suitable to be recorded under section 28 are only recorded under uh, this head and this uh, video will help you to understand uh, specific incomes uh, which are applicable under section 28. Okay, uh, recorded as uh, income from business and profession, the type of incomes or incomes which can be recorded as income from business and profession. Among the different uh, types of incomes earned by the SEC, only those incomes which are uh, to be recorded as income from business and profession is listed. Okay, so the list goes like this uh, or chargeability, when I say chargeability, it is about the eligibility of the incomes to be recorded as income from business and profession and here is the list. Number one profits and gains of any business or profession. So, when a business which is legally registered and upon the registration the business activities are carried out be it business or profession, upon doing such legal business or professional activities whatever the income which is earned uh, which is eligible to be taxed is only recorded under section 28 subsection 1 here. Okay? All kinds of uh, profits and gains from business or profession which is eligible under section 28 subsection 1 is chargeable to income from business and profession that is the first one. Second one compensation to management uh, agency section 28 subsection 2 tells us about compensation to management agency. There are uh, some uh, compensations categories of compensations which are provided to management agencies. Management agency being an institution uh, will, will take up the responsibility of managing the uh, business affairs or business activities of other institutions. It is a kind of service to others. So, such management agencies, if they receive any compensation from the government or from any notified agencies, then such compensation is eligible for recording as income from business and profession. So, that, that such incomes, such incomes will be chargeable under this head only. To the next one, income of trade or professional associations. We know in our society, different uh, sections of uh, employments are there, employees are there, businesses are there. So, these businesses or business associations or business institutions will have their own associations, their own group of people to safeguard their interest. For example, IMA, Indian Medical Association to protect the interest of the uh, people who are involved in the field of medicines okay, or medical. Similarly, there is lawyers association, professionals association, teachers association, traders association. So, these type of different associations will be functioning in order to protect the interest of the specified field of people. So, uh, in the process of running their association, if they make any profit or if they earn any income, then such incomes are chargeable under section 28 as income from business and profession. The purpose of these associations is not making profit. The sole purpose of these associations is to help the individuals belonging to that specific field. 
but in the due course of action if they make any profit or income then certainly it will be shown as income from business and profession. The next one is export incentive. You know as a government entity is natural to help or encourage the exporters. Uh, when a business is willing or intended to export its goods or services, it may require certain co uh, compensations or incentives or subsidies from the government. Such incentives or compensations received from the government for the purpose of promoting the exports uh, is also uh, taken equal to the profits. Along with the profits, whatever you earn from the export, the incentives you have received for promoting the exports is also taxable under section 28, is recorded as income under section 28, export incentives. Then perquisites from business or profession. As an individual, you may receive certain perquisites. When I say perquisites, non-financial benefits. Uh, uh, financial incentives are there, non-financial incentives are there. So when non-financial incentives are given, those non-financial incentives are regarded as perquisites and will be valued uh, in terms of uh, money and that value of benefit will be shown as income from business and profession. So the perquisites is also taxable under section 28 if it is received from any business or profession. Similarly, remuneration to partners. Uh, partnership firm is assessed as a separate person but partners uh, being in a partnership firm, whatever the remuneration they receive cannot be shown as income of the partnership firm. So the profits of the partnership firm is different from the income of the partners. So for being a partner in a partnership firm, the partner will receive the remuneration in the form of wages or salary, interest, commission, bonus, etc. So such remuneration whatever he receives will not be shown as the income from the partnership firm but will be shown as his individual income and it is apt to record such incomes under section 28 as income from business and professions. Going forward, amount received or receivable for certain agreement. Sometimes before taking up any business activity or during the course of business activity, it is quite normal to get into certain agreements, profitable agreements. Okay? It may be regarding uh, tangible or intangible assets. So when a, a person enters into profitable agreements, uh, it is it is obvious to generate some income from such agreements. Okay, uh, we may not see any exact uh, execution of activity, but even before any activity is executed, by virtue of the agreement itself, some uh, the, the, there is a possibility of receiving or earning some incomes. So such incomes are recorded as income from business and profession under this head, under section 28, subsection V A. Then key man insurance policy. In order to uh, safeguard the interest of that person who is key to the success of the business. So in a business there will be people, there will be individuals who are regarded or referred as key mans for the success of the business. If you take the example of Sundar Pichai of uh, Google or Satya Nadella of Microsoft, these are the people who are key to the success of the company. Their leadership matters a lot to the company. So in order to help or in order to uh, protect their health, or the interest of that individual company may take up the insurance policies on their life. Individually they can take personal life insurance policies in addition to that company will also take the policy on their life because they are important, they are key to the success of the company, their life matters most. So whatever the compensation received from such key man insurance policies is also taxable under section 28 as business income. Then conversion of stock into capital asset. Uh, sometimes your stock, for example, land you can assume as a stock or you, you might have preferred it as stock and when you want to earn profit out of the land, you may go and convert it into the saleable plots. Okay? So conversion of stock into capital asset is also one of the means of earning income. Then such incomes are recorded as income from business and profession. Conversion of land into sites is one of the simple examples or best example for understanding this concept. Stock, the idle asset becomes a profitable asset, becomes a capital asset and thereby it is going to generate income for the assessee. And the last one is recovery against a certain capital assets covered under section 35 AD. Section 35 AD is a very important section under Income Tax Act. There are certain assets uh, which are regarded as capital assets and deductions are also available for these sections. 
okay when when you are going to calculate the income from business and profession so on these certain uh, categories of assets falling under section 35 ad if any recoveries are made then such recoveries are regarded as income from business and profession okay so these are some of the points which are identified as the incomes which are 100% uh, eligible to be treated as incomes from business and profession under section 28 of the income tax act of 1961 so another important uh, topic i have covered under uh, the head business and profession moving on to the next video where i will be explaining you about the incomes which are not eligible to be treated as income from business and profession thank you